and check out the view from the CTV Skywatch camera looking out to the east just about an hour ago there and the steam rising from the pipes. I don't know if you can make it out or not. Just kind of lingering there like thick clouds, not really moving anywhere. Just indication how cold it got today. But on a warmer note, well, you're going to be enjoying this on ice, but on a warmer note, uh, we have tickets to give away, and that's why the wind line's up here. Saturday's game, the 29th of December, uh, Hurricanes uh, will be in town playing, so I have tickets to give away to that, so don't phone till 5.30. That's when the wind line opens. I'll step out of frame, let you take a look at the current conditions. Minus 18 is where we're at right now. Our low was minus 27 at 5 a.m. Our high at 2 p.m. was minus uh, 18 degrees, and we've kind of stayed there, so we're at our daytime high there. Take a look at the temperatures across the screen. We've got minus values here, some a slightly warmer, and the reason being already picking up some of the warmer air mass to the west. We've got a little bubble in the jet stream, and that's starting to make inroads. We'll get into a westerly flow tomorrow, and all those areas in the minus values will have better temperatures, single-digit minus values tomorrow. So we go to minus 5 here in Lethbridge for a daytime high tomorrow. That's quite the improvement, I must say, after the temperatures that we've been seeing. Radar map showing no active weather to speak of here. Some high, thin clouds. Some areas were reporting some thin ice crystals uh, earlier today uh, as the temperatures were quite cool today, but we're looking at most of that precipitation remaining uh, to the west of the Continental Divide areas again, like the Revelstoke area, Grand Prairie, uh, even Kelowna looking at uh, some snow, some light snow tonight and possibly tomorrow, but even those areas will be picking up sunshine. As we get into Saturday, you can see that area of high pressure on this side of the Continental Divide really taking in nicely and we get that westerly flow, so we pick up that warmer air mass, but for you skiers, there'll still be plenty of snow in the higher elevations of BC. Minus three degrees in St. John's. We've got winter storm watches and warnings out for southern Quebec in through the Maritimes, all of New Brunswick, parts of uh, Nova Scotia, uh, heavy snowfall warnings, and then to the south of that province, heavy rainfall warning. But the heavy snowfall warnings have been lifted for Pembroke and Petawawa in southern Ontario right now. Some light snow in Winnipeg, minus 12 degrees, minus 16 and minus 20 in Regina and Saskatoon, seeing some light snow there. Minus 20 degrees in Edmonton. We've got fog in Vancouver right now as a system moving on to the coast brings quite a bit of precipitation and a, and a warmer air mass there and we've got drifting snow in Whitehorse and Yellowknife overcast skies right now and uh, minus 22 degrees in Yellowknife at this hour and cooler than that of course with the wind chill values. For the overnight forecast for the various regions, East Kootenai for you folks you're looking at a chance of flurries tonight down to minus 10, minus 5 for your daytime high tomorrow and sun and cloud mix in a 30% chance of a flurry or two there tomorrow. Crow's Nest Pass, partly cloudy tonight, windy tonight, down to minus 8. Your winds will be back again tomorrow, gusting to 70 kilometers per hour in the afternoon and a high of minus 6. Medicine Hat, cloudy skies tonight, chance of a flurry or two, minus 20 for a low, and then tomorrow, sun and cloud mix, minus 7 for a daytime high. Winds will be out of the southwest at 20 kilometers per hour. Here in Lethbridge, we're looking at partly cloudy skies tonight. We're not going to budge much from where we are, minus 18 for a low, and then a sun and cloud mix tomorrow all the way up to minus 5, but yes, it will be windy, and yes, there will, there will be drifting snow, especially in the open areas, so be very careful when you're out driving tomorrow. And then, as you can see, temperatures looking not bad as we head into Monday and Tuesday, minus 2 and 0, and the rumor mill has it that we could be seeing 2 and 3 degrees for daytime highs as we get into Wednesday, so we're climbing out of the deep freezer. Now, Dory Story, this is our final part of the series on STARS Air Ambulance and why you should be supporting them. Over the years, STARS, or Shock Trauma Air Rescue Service, has been instrumental in transporting critically sick and injured people to life-saving medical care. Rob Parsons would not be alive today without STARS, and he is determined to make the most of this second chance at life. A lot of people know me from racing cars and drifting and stuff like that around Alberta, BC, everywhere. So I built my garage back up. I bought a car. I started rebuilding a car and that has passed a lot of time and, and made me feel, feel free and feel accomplished at doing stuff again. Rob is, uh, and his family are now STARS family members. We're all connected in one way or the other. Uh, not only is it important for us to make sure that the patient is cared for, but we're very interested in how the patient's doing after the fact as well. And this is a very good prime example of what that is.
it is the true miracle that stars what they provide and how they do it. I knew I was going to get to Calgary quickly to save uh, my life because I knew I knew something was really wrong when uh, I had to get airlifted. So I was thankful that they were there to uh, airlift me there in a quick amount of time and very thankful for the service that they provide. Dory Story, sponsored by Langenberg Optical, voted best of the best for 2012. School days are hectic for any family, but for some, there are other factors adding to that madness, like two daughters with type 1 diabetes. Lee, Do Lee Boyajan rather takes us on a day in the life of the Friesen family. Sierra, Savannah, and Sienna are going through their morning routine, counting. It's too good. Calculating. Prefer fiber one. And testing. I'm at 7.7, .7, Mom. Ten-year-old Sierra and four-year-old Sienna have type 1 diabetes. Sierra has been diabetic for five years, while her younger sister received her diagnosis just over a year ago. Because she saw her sister growing up with it ever since she was born. I think the transition so. was easier, yeah. um, but just as heartbreaking. Oh, very. The family lives around the corner from the girls' school, and Melanie works just down the road. That means you, no playing in the mud. Okay. Do you play in the mud? No. Full of personality, the sisters manage their disease together. My sisters are and I'm scared. If my older sister or my little sister is low, I ask them if they're okay and if they have a, if they've had some sugar yet. Blood sugar tests are needed every two hours, so Melanie and Ron return to check on Sienna, while Sierra is more independent in her day. Hi, Mom. I'm at 6.4. After checking in with Melanie, Sierra, 6.4. A diligent Savannah questions Sierra. They repeat the process during the afternoon nutrition break before the girls return home, constantly keeping track of numbers, even through the night. A daily process, that is... Overwhelming? <laughs> Overwhelming is a good way to put it. Lee Boyajin, CTV News. Good story. Next yes, up, indeed. sports. And yeah. a big day for a former Lethbridge Hurricane at the Spangler Cup. Yes, Byron Ritchie uh, gets two goals in the game for Team Canada as they bounce back at the Spangler Cup against the hosts. We'll have the highlights coming up next.